Hello, my name is Aurelio Voltaire. I am not super rich and I'm not super famous, but I have been making a living from my music for 20 years. And if that is something you want to do, I think I might be able to help you. Now, if you watched the last episode, we talked about getting started and presuming you've covered those bases, you've written a bunch of songs, you uh, can play an instrument to accompany yourself, and or you have collaborators that can get on stage and play those songs with you, you're ready for the next step. You need to get out there and play live shows. I can tell you right now that no amount of singing in the shower, no amount of strumming on a guitar in your bedroom will prepare you for your career as a performer like performing live on stage in front of an audience. Your voice alone will develop so much from that kind of an experience. When you sing at home at the same volume that you speak, everything sounds great. But when you are on stage, you know you've got to reach those people in the back. Your voice, finding your voice, finding what, who it is that you are and what you really sound like, only is really going to happen when you project like that. And that is going to come with being in front of people. But really, the big part is the instant criticism. Because while you're on stage in front of humans, you can tell immediately if what you're doing is good or bad. When you're doing well, people will look up at you and smile. When you're doing poorly, people will look at, at you and frown. Or worse, completely tune out or walk away. If you make a mistake in your bedroom playing the guitar, you flub a note or your voice cracks, you just kind of shrug it off and keep going. But when you're on stage and you do that, you notice the eyes of everyone suddenly on you widen and that will cause in you a sense of anxiety and you will tense up and you'll become really, really nervous, which ironically will lead to making more mistakes. Now the good news is that might happen to you the first time, the second time, the third time, but eventually if you just keep performing in front of people, you get to a point where you start to feel like you're just singing to a bunch of friends in your living room. And then when you make those mistakes, you kind of just laugh them off and keep going like you would at home. So you really, really, really need to get out there and play those live shows. Now, I've promised you in the previous episode that the whole point of this series is really to reveal a bunch of secrets, you know, things I've learned along the way that people don't generally know about the music business that I think really honestly, whatever modicum of success I have is, is really largely due to some of these revelations. And here's one of them. As a performer, are you ready for this? It is impossible to fail at being yourself. What does that mean? Well. Let's say hypothetically you see yourself as a heavy metal uh, front person. You, you see yourself as a heavy metal persona. There are certain conventions that are sort of uh, important to take on if you're a heavy metal persona, I guess, right? There's certain uh, ways you're gonna sing, there are certain types of clothes you're gonna wear, there's certain postures you're going to strike. And if you go out on stage and you try to play that persona, and, and something goes wrong, you know, you slip or you forget a line or, or your voice cracks, you have failed. You have now failed at, at presenting this image of what that heavy metal, you know, front person is supposed to be like. In sharp contrast, it is impossible to fail if the persona that you're portraying on stage is you. And I was very, very lucky because I discovered that at my very first show. Somewhere around March of 1995, I think it was, uh, I had been playing the guitar for maybe three months. I had arranged a bunch of my songs on the guitar, but I had been telling people for 15 years that I was a singer-songwriter because in my mind I was, and I was writing songs sort of a cappella. So everybody thought that I was a singer-songwriter who they had never seen perform. And uh, one night I went to this goth club and there was a solo acoustic goth performer singing and the promoter came up to me and said what do, what do you think and i said it's awful it's terrible i don't remember a single word he said i don't remember any of the melodies uh you know it was really ultimately not a very memorable experience and then in my great pomposity i said to him i put on a better show every night of the week in my living room and he looked at me and he said great you're doing your show here next sunday night 
Uh, so I, I guess you could say that my very first show was a dare. Uh, now when people say uh, I crapped my pants, that's a euphemism, uh, that's an idiom, uh, but I crapped my pants. I mean, I literally had diarrhea for a week. I am not joking, it's not a pretty story to tell, but I did not have a firm stool for an entire week. I was so scared. I was gonna get up on that stage. I barely knew how to play guitar. I had written a handful of songs, and, uh, and I got up on stage, and for the first song, I, I did my act, which was kind of black comedy, and I think I may have sang Ex-Lover's Lover, and my hands were shaking, and after the first or second song, I said kind of almost to myself, I'm so nervous. I don't really have a reason to be nervous, do I? And the audience erupted in, la in applause, actually. And they, they just all started clapping, and all of that nervousness went away. I revealed to them how I was feeling. They revealed to me that it was okay to feel that way and that I was in good company and that I could relax. And I did. And I've never ever been nervous on stage since. I now play at places like Dragon Con to 6,000 people. I just played at Wave Gothic Treffen in Germany, a big goth festival, to about 4,000 people. And I feel like I'm singing songs to three or four friends in my living room. Uh, so it is so wonderful to to have that security of knowing that whatever happens happens on stage i don't have to pretend to be perfect i don't have to pretend to be somebody else i can just be myself and now at this point believe me the audience almost hopes that i will make a mistake because i forget my lyrics i have a drinking game every time i forget my lyrics i take a swig and people think that's hilarious uh if i really really forget a song i'll drag somebody up from the audience who knows the song better than i do and i'll have them sing it so being yourself is so very, very liberating. It's all about honesty. Humans recognize honesty. You see this happen at comedy clubs all of the time. You've ever been to a comedy club and there's a comedian who's just dying up there. The jokes are terrible, nobody's laughing, the comedian's getting more and more nervous. And then they'll maybe sort of mutter under their breath something like, oh, I thought these jokes were funny when I wrote them at home. And everyone will burst into laughter. And that's because you're revealing what you really are feeling and what you really are thinking. And we've all been there. We've all had that moment. So being honest on stage is such a huge part of connecting with the audience. Uh, and it's a secret. It's something almost nobody does. Almost every performer gets up, gets up on stage and sort of pretends to be someone else. So being yourself on stage, if, if you can, I think is really, really liberating, and the, the audience really relates to that. And more importantly, when you are yourself, you become very comfortable, and there is nothing more inviting to an audience than watching somebody who is comfortable in their presence. Now, I want to touch a, a, a little bit on a phenomenon that people experience at the very beginning of their careers. Uh, I call it the moving vehicle syndrome. So you've, you've written your songs, you're ready to go out there and play songs, and you send you know some clubs uh, an email saying you want to play there, they don't get back to you. You see that The Cure is coming to town and you think, oh my god, I'd be a perfect match to open for The Cure. You know, I, I'm inspired by them, my music sounds like them. So you reach out to The Cure management and, and they never reply. And uh, it just seems like nobody wants to help you achieve your dreams. But, but you watch other people succeeding. You know, you see bands that are a little bit more successful or artists that are a little bit more successful and they, you know, they get a song placed on the radio or a song placed on a TV commercial or, or, or they got selected to open for The Cure. And you think, well, why are they helping them? Why aren't they helping me? And I'll tell you why. And that is because at this stage of your career, your art, your career, is a gasless car that you need help pushing up a hill. That's really what your career is at this stage. That is how people perceive it. You are looking around at people around you and you know you don't have any fans yet, you don't have any press, you don't have any awards, you don't have anything to quantify any level of success, but you want people to help you, right? Um, 
And so basically what you're asking them is you're asking them to help you push this ga gasless, derelict car up a hill. And who the hell wants to push a car up a hill? Nobody. I'm going to tell you right now, the only people you will ever find to help you push a car up a hill are martyrs, family members, and people who want to sleep with you really, really badly. That's pretty much it. Now on the other hand, you're watching other people jumping on somebody else's train. So, you know, you have the gasless car, but this other band looks like they have this really solid train chugging down the tracks and everybody wants to jump on. You know, they're all like, hey, can I get a ride to this town? Can I get a ride to that town? Hey, can, can I open for you at your show? Hey, can, you know, all these opportunities seem to fall all over the guy who's got the train. And you think to yourself, you know, my gasless car would become that train if people just helped me. It becomes kind of a catch-22, like how do I go from having no success to having lots of success if people won't help me become successful? And that can very, very quickly turn to bitterness. It turns to, well, they don't want to help me now, but when I become famous, I will never open for The Cure because they didn't reply to me. I, I will never play at that club that, that wouldn't reply to my emails. And that, unfortunately, is a very immature and very two-dimensional outlook to have. And I know this because I have been there and I have felt all those things and I have said all of those things until I had a major revelation about the music industry and about business in general. Are you ready for this? Because this is the biggest secret I'm probably going to reveal to you today. The music business has almost nothing to do with music. Well, that's quite a bombshell, huh? But it's true. The music business has very, very little to do with music. Uh, in fact, business in general has very, very little to do with anything but investment and return. That's really what all business comes to. Now, we get confused when it comes to anything involving art, you know, like music, acting, painting, filmmaking, toy design. All of these things, um, are based in art and we love art and art moves us. So we get very confused and stop realizing that uh, there's a business involved. You know, like if you want to get signed to a record label, a record label is going to presumably spend all this money to make your album, to, to put you on tour, to promote you, to take out ads in newspapers. That's, that's an investment, they're investing money. So are they doing this because your music is just so amazing? Not really. They're doing it because somewhere along the line, they got the impression that they had a reasonable expectation to get a return on their investment. And that's really what it all comes down to. People will only invest in you if they think that they are going to get a return on their investment plus a profit. So here you are, you're ready to go out and book shows, you're sending clubs uh, emails, you know, you're going to clubs and saying, hey, I'd really like to play here, you know, here's my demo. CD or, or my link to SoundCloud or whatever, and they're not replying, they, they're not booking you. And the reason is because, in this particular case, quite possibly, you maybe don't have any fans or you don't have enough fans. And fans are currency to a club that's going to book you. Let's say hypothetically, you perhaps delusionally told the club you wanted $500 to play there. The club is going to look at you and say, all right, well, if I give this artist $500, am I going to get that money back, hopefully with a profit? So they go to your Facebook page, you have five friends. They go to your YouTube page, you have six friends. There doesn't seem to be any chatter about your music, so their expectation, if they give you $500, is that maybe 10 people are gonna show up and they're gonna lose their shirts. So what are, why are they giving you $500? Is this a humanitarian donation so that you can live your dream on stage? That's not what anybody from the, from the business side of the music business, uh, that's not why they're in the game. You know, they're in the game to make a profit like everybody else who does any kind of business. So if on the other hand, you said, I want $500 to do a show and they went to your Facebook page and you have 50,000 fans and those fans are, they're not bots. They're real fans talking about your music. A thousand of them live in the town that you want to book the show in. The promoter might go, or the you know talent booker might go, oh wow, I think a hundred people would come to this show. Now if a hundred people pay $10 each, I'm gonna make a thousand dollars. 
So the club invested $500 to pay the artists. They made a $500 profit off of their investment. Success! That is how business works, kids. So you can't get angry at people for not wanting to pay you or book you or not wanting to sign you to a label because you don't seem like a great investment. You need to become the great investment. You need to become the obvious choice. You need to go from being that gasless car that needs help getting up the hill to being that solid locomotive chugging down the tracks that everybody wants to jump on top of. And how do you do that? You do that by building a large fan base. And how do you build a large fan base? Promotion. And that is what I'm going to talk with you about next time. But don't worry, I am not going to leave you hanging just yet. There's something that you can do. Here's your homework assignment. And this is something you can do immediately, even if there isn't one other person on earth who's ever heard your music. Before I tell you this foolproof way on how to book shows, even if you have no fans at all or no recorded music, I first want to tell you a quick anecdote. I have, in recent history, have gotten interested in acting in films, and there have been some roles that, believe me when I say, I would have loved to have played. But, you know, maybe they were really, really big blockbuster productions. They're not going to choose someone like me. They're going to choose someone like, you know, Benjamin Cumberbatch, for instance. For instance. Uh, you know, why would they choose Benjamin Cumberbatch and not me? Well, because he has millions of fans, and if they invest in Benjamin Cumberbatch, whether he's the right person or not to play the role, they're guaranteed that no matter how much they pay this guy, he's going to bring millions of people to the movie theater. That's the investment. That is the investment. They are definitely going to get a return on their investment. Now, if they book me, they might get hundreds of people to buy a ticket to that particular film. Maybe thousands of people, but certainly not millions. Again, it's all about business. It's all about numbers. It is a numbers game. So how do I react to a situation like that where maybe a role I really want to play I'm not going to get? I have to become the obvious choice. I have to become the best investment. I have to become that freight train chugging down the track. Well, how, how do you do that from nothing? Because acting is my fifth career. I, I've only done a little of it. I haven't done much of it. The answer is work for free. Find opportunities to put your talents in front of people. I'm not, sh I'm not ashamed to work for free if I'm trying to gain experience and I'm trying to build a resume. So at the very, very beginning of your musical career, the first thing you probably have to accept is that if you're gonna play shows, you're probably not gonna get paid to play those shows. That's number one. I mean, you can't really go demanding huge guarantees if you don't have the fan base to support that. So number one, be really eager to play shows that are gonna put you in front of the right audience. Don't worry about what that pays. Payment will come later when you've proven yourself as a good investment. Um, but here's the number one thing that you should be doing right this very second. Every town with any kind of music scene has an open mic. Go to the open mic. You don't need a fan base. You don't need recorded music. You don't need anything. You just show up, sign up, and you will be able to play your songs in front of a group of people. Now, don't just play your songs and leave. That's kind of, uh, well, what the kids call a dick move. Stick around, support the other performers, get to know the other performers. You're looking for collaborators? This might be the place where you find your guitarist, where you find your violinist. It's not all about you, and that's very, it's, believe me, I've had to learn this the hard way because I, as artists, we all tend to be very, uh, we can tend to be very self-centered and in our own heads, and uh, you have to understand that opportunities will start to present themselves to you if you're not just out for yourself, but if you are willing to build a sense of community. So, open mic is a great way to start. Is there a music scene in your town that's, that corresponds well with the kind of music you make? Get involved. Maybe there's a DJ or promoter that books goth bands and you, you're in a goth band. Don't just go and ask them to book you. Attend their parties. Promote their parties. Support their endeavors. 
And after a while, you don't become just that person asking for help. You become, oh, that's that really helpful person. I see their face at the party. They're always very pleasant. They help me promote the party. They tell all their friends about my party. And then when the opportunity comes up where they're looking for a band, they may very well book you. So always have a sense of not just what do I get out of this, but how can I be a team player? How can I also bring something to this community that I want to be a part of? So if you haven't played any shows yet, your homework assignment is to go to an open mic this week. Play one song, play two songs, play three songs. Be pleasant, meet people, be friendly, have a sense of community. And I promise you that this will lead to booking shows more regularly. And we can talk a little bit more specifically how to book shows in a technical sense next time. Actually, next time we are going to talk about how to build your fan base and how to make you that speeding locomotive. I'll see you next time. If you've enjoyed this video and you have found it helpful and or entertaining, please like the video and don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you'll know when there will be more of these. Also, if you have ideas for what you'd like some advice about, leave that in the comments section. And remember, if you're willing to work hard and you're really passionate about the art that you're making, but mostly you're willing to work really, really hard, you can succeed in a music career. I believe that and I believe in you. I'll see you next time on the Future Rockstars Handbook.